son of Anthony Fossey Business Head Office, Bo. Fossey redirects here. For the 2021 documentary film, see Fossey, film. For other people sharing this surname, see Fossey, surname. Anthony Fossey. Omri. Anthony Fossey 2020.jpg. Fossey in April 2020. Second Chief Medical Advisor to the President. Incumbent. Assumed Office. January 20, 2021. President Joe Biden. Preceded by Ronnie Jackson, 2019. Fifth Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Incumbent. Assumed Office. November 2, 1984. Deputy James Hill. John LaMontagne. Hugh Auchin Kloss. Preceded by Richard M. Cross. Personal Details. Born Anthony Stephen Fossey. December 24, 1940, age 80. New York City, U.S. Spouses Christine Grady. M. 1985. Children 3. Education. College of the Holy Cross, B.A. Cornell University, M.D. Awards. Maxwell Finland Award, 1989. Ernst Young Prize, 1995. Lasker Award, 2007. Presidential Medal of Freedom, 2008. Robert Koch Prize, Gold, 2013. Knight Grand Cross of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic, 2020. Public Welfare Medal, 2021. Dan David Prize, 2021. Scientific Career. Fields Immunology. Institutions National Institutes of Health, National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Anthony Stephen Fossey Omre, slash Fatty Slash, born December 24, 1940, is an American physician scientist and immunologist serving as the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, and the chief medical advisor to the president. As a physician with the National Institutes of Health, NIH, Fossey has served the American public health sector in various capacities for more than 50 years and has acted as an advisor to every U.S. president since Ronald Reagan. 1. He has been director of the NIAID since 1984 and has made contributions to HIV-AIDS research and other immunodeficiency diseases, both as a research scientist and as the head of the NIAID. 2. From 1983 to 2002. Fossey was one of the world's most frequently cited scientists across all scientific journals. 2. In 2008, President George W. Bush awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States, for his work on the AIDS relief program BEPFR. 3. During the COVID-19 pandemic, he served under President Donald Trump as one of the lead members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. He has frequently received harsh criticism from Trump supporters who believe his contradictions of Trump's views on the pandemic were intended to politically undermine Trump as he ran for re-election. Some falsely claimed he was involved in creating the virus in a Chinese lab. 456 After Joe Biden took office, Fossey began serving as one of the lead members of the White House COVID-19 response team. Fossey is additionally serving as Biden's chief medical advisor. 7-8. Contents. 1. Early life and education. 2. Career. 2.1. Medical achievements. 2.2. HIV slash AIDS epidemic. 2.3. 2009 swine flu pandemic. 2.4. Ebola congressional hearing. 2.5. COVID-19 pandemic. 2.5.1 Trump administration. 2.5.2 Biden administration. 3 cultural impact. 4 personal life. 5 memberships. 6 awards and honors. 7 selected works and publications. 8 references. 9 further reading. 10 external links. Early life and education. 
Anthony Fossey was born on December 24, 1940, in Brooklyn, New York City, to Eugenia Lillian, née Abyes, 1909-1965, and Stephen A. Fossey, 1910-2008. His father was a Columbia University-educated pharmacist who owned his own pharmacy. Fossey's mother and sister worked the pharmacy's register and Fossey delivered prescriptions. The pharmacy was located in the Diker Heights section of Brooklyn, directly beneath the family apartment, previously in the Bensonhurst neighborhood. 9. Fossey's grandparents immigrated to the United States from Italy in the late 19th century. His paternal grandparents, Antonino Fossey and Caligera Gardino, were from Squaca, and his maternal grandparents were from Naples. His maternal grandmother Raffaella Trimatera was a seamstress, and his maternal grandfather Giovanni Abise was a Swiss-born artist noted for his landscape and portrait painting, magazine illustrations in Italy, as well as graphic design for commercial labels, including olive oil cans. Fossi grew up Catholic, 910, but now considers himself a humanist stating that he thinks that there are a lot of things about organized religion that are unfortunate, and, that he tends, to like to stay away from it. 11. In 2021, he was named Humanist of the Year by the American Humanist Association. 12. Fossey attended Regis High School, a private Jesuit school in Manhattan's Upper East Side where he captained the school's basketball team despite standing only 5 feet 7 in, 1.70 meters, tall. 13-14-2, after graduating in 1958, Fossey attended the College of the Holy Cross, graduating in 1962 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Classics with a pre-med track. Fossey then attended Cornell University's Medical College, now Weill Cornell Medicine graduating first in his class with a Doctor of Medicine degree in 1966. 9. He then did an internship and residency in internal medicine at New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center, now Weill Cornell Medical Center. 2. Career File Dr. Anthony Fauzi America's Man on Infectious Diseases Vo.Web Play Media Fauzi discusses his work in 2020, 4 minutes. After completing his medical residency in 1968, Fossey joined the National Institutes of Health NIH, as a clinical associate in the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases NIAID, Laboratory of Clinical Investigation LCI. 15, he became head of the LCI's clinical physiology section in 1974 and in 1980 was appointed chief of the NIAID's Laboratory of Immunoregulation. In 1984, he became director of the NIAID, a position he still holds. 16. Fossey has been offered the position of director of the NIH several times, but has declined each time. 17. Fossey has been at the forefront of U.S. efforts to contend with viral diseases like HIV-AIDS, SARS, the swine flu, MERS, Ebola, and COVID-19. He played a significant role in the early 2000s in creating the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR-18, and in driving development of biodefense drugs and vaccines following the 9-11 terrorist attacks. 19. Fossey has been a visiting professor at many medical centers and has received numerous honorary doctorates from universities in the U.S. and abroad. 20. Medical Achievements President Bill Clinton visits the NIH in 1995 and hears about the latest advances in HIV-AIDS research from Fossey. Fossey has made important scientific observations that contributed to the understanding of the regulation of the human immune response and is recognized for delineating the mechanisms whereby immunosuppressive agents adapt to that response. He developed therapies for formerly fatal diseases such as polyarteritis nodosa granulomatosis with polyanitis, and lymphomatoid granulomatosis. In a 1985 Stanford University Arthritis Center survey, 
Members of the American Rheumatism M Association ranked Fossey's work on the treatment of polyarteritis nodosa and granulomatosis with polyanitis as one of the most important advances in patient management in rheumatology over the previous 20 years. 2021-22 President Barack Obama greets Fossey in June 2014. Fossey has contributed to the understanding of how HIV destroys the body's natural defense system, progressing to AIDS. He has outlined the mechanisms of induction of HIV expression by endogenous cytokines. 22. Fossey has worked to develop strategies for the therapy and immune reconstitution of patients with the disease, as well as for a vaccine to prevent HIV infection. His current research is concentrated on identifying the nature of the immunopathogenic mechanisms of HIV infection and the scope of the body's immune responses to HIV. In 2003, the Institute for Scientific Information stated that from 1983 to 2002, Fossey was the 13th most cited scientist among the 2.5 to 3.0 million authors in all disciplines throughout the world who published articles in scientific journals. 2. As a government scientist under seven presidents, Fossey has been described as a consistent spokesperson for science, a person who more than any other figure has brokered a generational peace between the two worlds of science and politics. 13. HIV-AIDS Epidemic Fossey in 1984 In a 2020 interview with The Guardian, Fossey remarked, My career and my identity has really been defined by HIV. 23, he was one of the leading researchers during the AIDS epidemic in the early 1980s. 24, in 1981, he and his team of researchers began looking for a vaccine or treatment for this novel virus though they would meet a number of obstacles. 25. In October 1988, protesters came to the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Fossey, who had become the Institute's director in 1984, bore the brunt of the anger from the LGBTQ plus community who were largely ignored by the government. 26-27. Leading AIDS activist Larry Kramer attacked Fossey relentlessly in the media. 28. He called him an incompetent idiot and a pill-pushing tool of the medical establishment. Fossey did not have control over drug approval though many people felt he was not doing enough. Fossey did make an effort in the late 1980s to reach out to the LGBTQ plus community in New York and San Francisco to find ways he and the NIAID could find a solution. 26. Though Fossey was initially admonished for his treatment of the AIDS epidemic, his work in the community was eventually acknowledged. Kramer, who had spent years hating Fossey for his treatment of the HIV-AIDS epidemic, eventually called him the only true and great hero among government officials during the AIDS crisis. 29-26 Political commentator Helen Andrews defended Fossey's actions during the epidemic in a 2021 article writing. The idea that Fossey was wrong about AIDS, which some of his contemporary opponents repeat, is unfair. His most notorious error was a 1983 paper suggesting routine close contact, as within a family household, might spread the disease, but it was an understandable mistake given what was known at the time and he corrected it within a year, lightning speed by the standards of academic publishing. He behaved more responsibly than some of his peers when it came to speculating about a heterosexually ideas epidemic around the corner. He was not one of the hysteria mongers, though he did benefit from the hysteria when negotiating budgets with Congress. 30. 2009 Swine Flu Pandemic In a meeting with reporters on September 17, 2009, Fossey predicted that the H1N1 virus causing the 2009 swine flu pandemic could infect as many as one in three Americans, more than the amount of Americans usually infected by the seasonal flu. 31. Ebola Congressional Hearing See also, Ebola virus cases in the United States. On October 16, 2014, in a United States congressional hearing regarding the Ebola virus crisis, Fossey, who, 
as the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, had been discussing the importance of screening for weeks, 32, testified that NIAID was still some distance away from producing sufficient quantities of cures or vaccines for widespread trials. 33, specifically, Fossey said, while NIAID is an active participant in the global effort to address the public health emergency occurring in West Africa, it is important to recognize that we are still in the early stages of understanding how infection with the Ebola virus can be treated and prevented. 33. Fossey also remarked in the hearing, as we continue to expedite research while enforcing high safety and efficacy standards, the implementation of the public health measures already known to contain prior Ebola virus outbreaks and the implementation of treatment strategies such as fluid and electrolyte replacement is essential to preventing additional infections, treating those already infected, protecting healthcare providers, and ultimately bringing this epidemic to an end. 33. COVID-19 Pandemic See also, COVID-19 Pandemic in the United States Trump administration. Fossey speaks to the White House press corps on COVID-19 in April 2020, watched by President Donald Trump, left, and Vice President Mike Pence, right. Fossey was a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force established in late January 2020, under President Donald Trump, to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. 3435 he became a de facto public health spokesperson for the office of the president during the pandemic 36-37, and a strong advocate for ongoing social distancing efforts in the United States. 38. In interviews on January 21, January 26 and February 17, Fossey commented on COVID-19. He said that at the time of the interviews, right now, COVID-19 was not a major threat to the American public with the risk to the American public being low, but this was an, an evolving situation, and public health officials need to take, COVID-19, very seriously. 3940, in the latter interview, Fossey said that COVID-19 could become a global pandemic which would then have significant implications for the United States. 40. In March 2020, he predicted that the infection fatality rate would likely be close to 1%, which was 10 times more severe than the 0.1% reported rate for seasonal flu. 4142. In a March 8, 2020, interview, Fossey stated that right now in the United States, people, who are not infected, should not be walking around with masks, but if you want to do it, that's fine. 4344. In the same interview, Fossey said that buying masks could lead to a shortage of masks for the people who really need them. When you think masks, you should think of healthcare providers needing them. 43-45, when Fossey made this comment, America's top surgical mask maker was struggling to produce enough masks to meet the increased demand. 45, on April 3, the CDC reversed course quoting recent studies that showed asymptomatic transmission of the virus, thus advocating for the public to wear non-surgical masks to reduce community transmission, while Fossey advocated for wearing facial coverings in public. 44. In mid-April, when asked about social distancing and stay-at-home measures, Fossey said that if the administration had started mitigation earlier more lives could have been saved, and no one is going to deny that. He added that the decision-making for implementing mitigation measures was complicated, and there was a lot of pushback about shutting things down back then. 46. Fossey's comments were met with a hostile response from former Republican congressional candidate Diana Lorraine. Trump retweeted Lorraine's response, which included the call to hash fire Fossey, drawing public alarm. Fire Fossey has also been chanted by anti-lockdown protesters in various locations, including Florida and Texas. 47. As a result, the White House denied that Trump was firing Fossey, and blamed the media for overreacting. 48-49. Due to Trump's opposition to CDC mask-wearing guidelines and social distancing measures, which Fossey is a proponent of, 
Aussie has been criticised by right-wing pundits and received death threats that necessitated a security detail. 50-51-52, in an interview with 60 Minutes he mentioned that other members of his family, including his wife and daughters, have been repeatedly harassed since the pandemic began. 53. Fossey receives his first dose of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine, in December 2020, at a NIH vaccination event. In June 2020, Fossey said that he was very concerned that the ongoing protests against police brutality would cause surges in COVID-19 cases, stating that the large crowds are a perfect setup for the virus to spread. 54. In July 2020, Fossey advised the public to avoid crowds of any type. 55. On July 6, 2020, Fossey spoke on a Facebook live stream, offering his opinion that the country's situation as pertaining to COVID-19 is really not good, pointing to more than 55,000 new cases on July 4, 2020. He said the United States was still knee-deep in the first wave of cases, and was experiencing a resurgence of infections. 56. On July 7, 2020, during a press conference, Fossey stated that it was a false narrative to take comfort in a lower rate of death for COVID-19 in the country, there's so many other things that are very dangerous and bad about this virus, don't get yourself into false complacency. Both Trump and the White House had cited the falling death rate as proof of success of the Trump administration's response. 57. After this appearance by Fossey, the White House cancelled three media appearances by Fossey that had been scheduled for later that week. 58. On July 7, 2020, Trump contradicted Fossey's comments describing a dire situation in the country, with Trump saying, I think we are in a good place. I disagree with. Fossey. 59. While there were disagreements, Trump also at times praised Fossey. 60 61 62. On July 9, 2020, Trump publicly claimed that Fossey made a lot of mistakes. 58 63 64. By July 12, 2020, a White House official told media outlets that several White House officials are concerned about the number of times Dr. Fossey has been wrong on things, passing to the media on a list of purported mistakes made by Fossey during the outbreak. 58-63, one of the supposed mistakes highlighted was Fossey's February 29, 2020, statement in an interview that at this moment, there is no need to change anything that you're doing on a day-by-day -day basis. However, the White House less neglected to mention that in that same interview, Fossey had stated that the risk could change, when you start to see community spread, and that the disease could morph into a major outbreak in the country. 65. As late as September 23, 2020, when U.S. coronavirus fatalities exceeded 200,000, Conservatives continued to question Fossey's and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's CDC, recommendations for responding to the pandemic. In a hearing before the Senate's Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, 66, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul asked him if he had second thoughts about his mitigation recommendations, including keeping six feet of distance from others and mask wearing, claiming, our death rate is essentially worse than Sweden's. Fossey stood by the guidelines, indicating Sweden's fatality rate exceeded those of other Scandinavian countries, and said the comparison between Sweden and the US was not legitimate. Fossey said the recommendations remained valid. After Paul then asserted New York's high fatality rate showed that mitigation efforts were insufficient, Fossey replied, You've misconstrued that, Senator and you've done that repetitively in the past. Fossey explained further that New York State had succeeded in getting the virus under control by following the CDC's clinical guidelines. 67, Paul had made numerous claims about herd immunity, Sweden's interventions to combat the pandemic, the contention that the populations of Asian countries have greater resilience against COVID-19, and statements about death rates due to the virus. 66. In October 2020, 
Fossey objected after his words I can't imagine that anybody could be doing more were featured in an advertisement from the Trump campaign touting Trump's handling of the pandemic. Fossey said he did not consent to the ad, his words were taken out of context, he was actually referring to how hard the coronavirus task force was working, 68, and he had never made a political endorsement in his career. 69. On October 18, 2020, Fossey mentioned that he wasn't surprised Donald Trump contracted COVID-19. 53. The next day, during a presidential call, Trump called Fossey a disaster and said that people are tired of COVID. 70. During a campaign rally in Phoenix, Arizona on October 19, Trump launched attacks on his political rival Joe Biden saying that Biden wants to listen to Dr. Fossey regarding the handling of the pandemic, upon which Biden merely replied yes on Twitter. 71. On October 31, The Washington Post published an extensive interview with Fossey, in which he voiced a candid assessment of the administration's COVID-19 policies and was critical of the influence of presidential adviser Scott Atlas. 72. Shortly after midnight on November 2, 2020, Trump insinuated he would fire Fossey after the election while on stage at a campaign rally at Miami Opalaka Executive Airport in Opalaka, Florida. At the rally, he made false claims that the pandemic was rounding the turn and was met by audience chants of fire Fossey, to which he responded don't tell anybody, but let me wait until after the election, I appreciate the advice. 73-74, despite the rhetoric, Fossey was not fired. On December 2, the United Kingdom became the first Western country to license a vaccine against the coronavirus, Pfizer-BioNTech. In response, Fossey said that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, was proceeding the correct way, 75, and said the UK really rushed through that approval. 76. The next day Fossey apologized, telling the BBC I have a great deal of confidence in what the UK does both scientifically and from a regulator standpoint. Our process is one that takes more time than it takes in the UK, I did not mean to imply any sloppiness even though it came out that way. 77. On January 3, 2021. President Trump tweeted, The number of cases and deaths of the China virus is far exaggerated in the United States because of, the CDC's, ridiculous method of determination compared to other countries. 78, that same morning, Fossey responded in an interview on NBC's Meet the Press, The numbers are real. We have well over 300,000 deaths. We are averaging 2 to 3,000 deaths per day. All you need to do, is go into the trenches, go into the hospitals, go into the intensive care units and see what is happening. Those are real numbers, real people and real deaths. 79. When asked if the 2021 United States Capitol attack was a COVID-19 super spreader event, Fossey stated, I think for those people there, they probably put themselves at an increased risk because they essentially did not adhere to the fundamentals of public health and COVID-19 context which is universal wearing of masks, keeping physical distance, avoiding crowds and congregate settings. The fact that it was outdoors is a little bit better than if they were indoors completely. But you can still have a super spreader situation when you do things in a crowded way. 80. On January 23, 2021, Fossey was quoted saying that letting the science speak on the pandemic got him into a little bit of trouble and got pushback from people in the White House, including the president, during the Trump administration. Fossey was also reportedly blocked from appearing on the Rachel Maddow show for some time because the Trump administration didn't like the way Maddow handles things and they didn't want me on the show. 81. Biden administration. Fossey and President Joe Biden in February 2021. On December 3, 2020, President elect Joe Biden asked Fossey, in addition to remaining in his role as director of the NIAID, to serve as the chief medical advisor to the president in the Biden administration. 82 83, Fossey accepted the offer. 84. 
After the inauguration of Joe Biden in January 2021, Fossey said he experienced a liberating feeling in being able to speak freely about science without interference from the new administration. He pictured Biden's administration as committed to being completely transparent, open and honest. 85, in early April 2021, Fossey said of the current situation in the United States that it's almost a race between getting people vaccinated and this surge that seems to want to increase. 86. In early May 2021, when asked if the CDC summer camp guidance was excessive, Fossey responded by saying that I wouldn't call them excessive, but they certainly are conservative and added that the guidance looks a bit strict and a bit stringent. 87. Also in early May, Fossey said that he is not convinced that COVID-19 originated naturally and that we should continue to investigate what went on in China until we continue to find out to the best of our ability what happened. 88. In mid-May 2021, Fossey said that Americans who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 no longer need to wear masks outdoors, except for in completely crowded situations. 89. This guidance was updated in July 2021 to recommend that all people wear masks regardless of vaccination status, in what Fossey said was due to the much more contagious Delta variant. 90. In May 2021, Fossey denied that the National Institutes of Health supported gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. 91. In early June 2021, over 3,000 internal government emails sent by Fossey from January to June 2020 were obtained by media outlets through Freedom of Information Act FOIA, requests. These emails contain information about how the United States and Fossey initially responded to COVID-19. 92-93 On June 22, 2021 Fossey said that the SARS-CoV-2 Delta variant is the greatest threat to eliminating COVID-19 in the United States. 94. Cultural Impact Owing to his prominent role in the United States' response to numerous global pandemics, most notably HIV-AIDS and COVID-19, Fossey has become the subject of tributes and interpretations across various media, including television, literature, merchandising, and internet memes. 95-96, Brad Pitt's performance as Fosse during the 2020 season of Saturday Night Live earned the actor an Emmy nomination, and praise from Fosse. 97, author Sally Quinn has credited Fosse as the inspiration for the love interest to the protagonist in her best-selling 1991 romance novel Happy Endings. 98, Larry Kramer based the character Dr. Anthony Delavida on Fosse in his play The Destiny of Me. 99. In the spring of 2020 amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, bakeries across the United States began selling pastries, particularly donuts, with Fosse's face on them to pay tribute to his work in the public health sector. 100. In September 2021, Fosse a documentary film about Fosse's life and career, was released by Magnolia Pictures. 101, the film was produced by National Geographic Documentary Films. 102. Personal Life In 1985, Fosse married Christine Grady, a nurse and bioethicist with the NIH, after they met while treating a patient. 103. Grady is chief of the Department of Bioethics at the National Institutes of Health Clinical Center. 57. Together they have three adult daughters. 104. Memberships Fossey is a member of the National Academy of Sciences, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the National Academy of Medicine, the American Philosophical Society, 105, and the Royal Danish Academy of Sciences and Letters as well as other numerous professional societies including the American Society for Clinical Investigation, the Infectious Diseases Society of America, and the American Association of Immunologists. He serves on the editorial boards of many scientific journals, as an editor of Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, and as an author, co-author, 
or editor of more than 1,000 scientific publications, including several textbooks. 106. On March 23, 2021, Fossey was admitted as an honorary fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. 107. Awards and Honours Ben Carson and Anthony Fossey, Wright, being announced as recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President George W. Bush at the White House on June 19, 2008. 1979, Arthur S. Fleming Award 108. 1993, Honorary Doctor of Science, Bates College 109. 1995, Ernst Young Prize, shared with Samuel A. Wells Jr. 110. 1995, Honorary Doctor of Science, Duke University 111. 1996, Honorary Doctor of Science, Colgate University 112. 1999, Honorary Doctor of Public Service, Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania 113. 2002, Albany Medical Center Prize 114. 2003, American Academy of Achievements Golden Plate Award 115. 2005, National Medal of Science 116. 2005, American Association of Immunologists Lifetime Achievement Award 117. 2007, Mary Woodard Lasker Public Service Award 118. 2007, George M. Cobra Medal, Association of American Physicians 9. 2008, Presidential Medal of Freedom 115. 2013, UCSF Medal 119. 2013, Robert Koch Gold Medal 120. 2013, Prince Mehdal Award 121. 2015, Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters, Johns Hopkins University 122-123. 2015, Honorary Doctor of Public Service, The George Washington University 124-125. 2016, John Dirks Canada Gardner Global Health Award 126. 2018, Honorary Doctor of Science, Commencement Speaker, American University 127. 2018, Honorary Doctor of Science, Boston University 128. 2020, Federal Employee of the Year 129. 2020, Presidential Citation for Exemplary Leadership, National Academy of Medicine 130. 2020, Ripple of Hope Award from the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights 131. 2020, Times Guardian of the Year, along with the Frontline Health Workers, Asatrauer, Portia Bennett Bay, and Racial Justice Organizers. 132. 2020, Harris Dean's Award 133. 2020, Knight Grand Cross of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic 134. 2020, John Maddox Prize 135. 2021, Public Welfare Medal of the National Academy of Sciences 136. 2021, Dan David Prize 137. 2021, President's Medal of the George Washington University 138-139 2021, Honorary Doctor of Science, McGill University 140 In addition to receiving an honorary degree in 2015, Fossey was invited to deliver guest remarks on May 21, 2020, for the Johns Hopkins University Class of 2020. 141 other notable guest speakers during the virtual ceremony included Reddit co-founder and commencement speaker Alexis Ohanian, and philanthropist and former New York City Mayor Michael R. Bloomberg. 142